Hi guys, it's Mrs. Quinn back again to read you another listening and learn listening and learning. <laughs> um read aloud. So before I get started, I want to ask you who Oops. Who is this? Did you say Susan B. Anthony? You're correct. Okay, pop quiz. What was she all about? Did you say women's rights? Yay! All right. Who is this? Did you say Eleanor Roosevelt? Yay! All right. And what was she all about? Sorry. Human rights. Very good. And who was she? Did you say Mary McLeod Bethune? Yay. And what was she all about? She was a teacher. She was all about education, right? For everyone, especially African-American girls. Very good. Oop, let me put these to the side. Okay, so I'm going to go over today's vocabulary. And again, we want active listening. And so I want you actively listening for these. Take some notes if you would like to. Okay, because this is called listening and learning. All right. First vocabulary word for today is challenge. To question whether something is right or wrong, here is an example. Knowing it was not up for discussion, my sister did not want to challenge my parents' decision to not get a pet. Second vocabulary word is gamble. Gamble means to take a chance. Here is an example. If you plan an outdoor picnic on a cloudy day, you gamble that it will not rain. Third vocabulary word is hostility. Hostility is a feeling or act of ill will or unfriendliness. Here's an example. Instead of shaking hands at the end of the game, the other team showed hostility by walking off without congratula congratulating us on our win. Mm. Okay, another vocab word, intimidate. To try to make someone do something by making him or her afraid. Oh boy, here's an example. My older brother tried to intimidate me into doing his chores by saying he would take away my toys if I didn't cooperate. Eee. All right, and last one, teammates. Members of the same side working together for a common goal. Here's an example. The teammates work together to pass the ball down the court and win the game. Okay, so today we're going to read about a person named Jackie Robinson. Jackie Robinson. Okay, you ready? Okay, here we go. Baseball has been a popular sport for a very long time. But did you know that there was a time when African-American baseball players and white baseball players did not play together? This all changed when a man named Jackie Robinson showed the world what a great player he was. He also showed the world how much courage he had too. This is the incredible story of Jackie Robinson. Jack Roosevelt, Jackie Robinson, was born in 1919 in Cairo, Georgia. He was the youngest of five children. His parents were sharecroppers. Those are people who worked the land for others for very little pay. Jackie's father left his family when Jackie was a baby. His mother, Mally Robinson, moved the family to Pasadena, California to be near relatives who would help her raise her children. The Robinsons lived in a small house on Pepper Street. Mally worked many different jobs to support her family. Despite hardships, Jackie grew up in a close and loving family. From an early age, Jackie was a talented athlete. When he became a student at John Muir High School, his brothers, Mac and Frank, encouraged him to play sports. Jackie played football, basketball, baseball, and tennis, and he ran track, too. 
He played shortstop and catcher on the baseball team, quarterback on the football team, and guard on the baseball team. In track and field, he won awards for the long jump. After high school, Jackie attended Pasadena Junior College. Again, he played basketball, football, and baseball, and he ran track. On the football team, he played quarterback and safety. He was shortstop and leadoff hitter for the baseball team, and he broke school long jump records. Before long, the University of California in Los Angeles, also known as UCLA, offered Jackie an athletic scholarship. Jackie was happy to accept. While at UCLA, Jackie proved himself to be a good student and an amazing athlete. As a UCLA student, he competed in four sports, baseball, basketball, football, and track. Jackie was selected for the All-American football team, which is a team of players from different schools who are the best players in the country. When Jackie left college, he began playing football for the Honolulu Bears, a Hawaiian semi-professional team. When the United States became involved in World War II, Jackie joined the United States Army. After two years, he was promoted to the officer rank of second lieutenant. There we go. Growing up, Jackie had been aware of discrimination. When Jackie joined the army, he realized that there was discrimination there too. Jackie felt the need to challenge these attitudes. When Jackie was in the Army, he refused in order to sit in the back of a military bus. Jackie felt that the color of his skin should not determine where he could or could, could not sit. Jackie was court-martialed for refusing this order. However, at his trial, he was found to be not guilty. Jackie left the Army toward the end of World War II. He was signed to play shortstop for the Kansas City Monarchs. The Monarchs were a team that belonged to something called the National Negro League. It was in this league that African American players were allowed to play baseball. Jackie traveled all over the Midwest during that season with his league. One day, a man named Branch Rickey saw Jackie play. Branch Rickey was the president of the Brooklyn Dodgers. Branch thought that Jackie was an incredible player. He wanted Jackie to play for his team. The only problem was that the Brooklyn Dodgers was an all-white team. Branch met with Jackie and told him that he needed Jackie to be very brave. He wanted Jackie to become the first African-American to play in the all-white Major League Baseball program. This was referred to as breaking the color barrier. This meant that before this time, a person's skin color was a barrier or something that stopped them from playing in many sports leagues. Branch wanted Jackie to break this barrier. He explained to Jackie that at first, he would probably be treated badly by most of the fans and even by some of his fellow players. But Branch was willing to gamble that Jackie was strong enough to break the color barrier and change attitudes. He believed that Jackie had self-control and courage. Before Jackie agreed, he asked Branch a question. Jackie asked, Are you looking for someone who is afraid to fight back? Branch replied, No, I need a player with guts enough to not fight back. Jackie Robinson agreed to be that man. Oops. Let me change this. Everyone in class knows how this goes. We gotta switch it around, right? Okay. There we go. <laughs> Jackie traveled to Daytona Beach, Florida for spring training. 
he began playing with the Montreal Royals, a training team for the Brooklyn Dodgers. Jackie played well. The most difficult days for Jackie were often when he was off the field and traveling with other players. During this time, Jackie could not stay in the same hotels as his teammates. He could not eat at the same restaurants and diners. Jackie did not like this one bit, but he was determined to become the first African-American Major League Baseball player in the United States. And then it happened. Just six days before the start of the 1947 baseball season, Jackie got the call that he had been waiting for. The Dodgers wanted him to play. Sadly, not all of his teammates were happy about this. Some said they would rather sit out and miss a game than play with Jackie. But Jackie's teammate, Pee Wee Reese, came to his defense. You can hate a man for many reasons, Pee Wee said. Color is not one of them. On April 15th, 1947, when Jackie put on the Brooklyn Dodgers uniform wearing number 42, he broke the color barrier. He, as the first African-American player on a major league team, made his debut at Ebbets Field before a crowd of 26,623 people, including more than 14,000 African-American fans. Jackie knew that he would have to be strong and concentrate on the game and nothing else. At first, there was a great deal of hostility. People called him names, but Jackie just played baseball. Some of his teammates would not sit with him. No matter, game after game, Jackie focused on playing, even when pitchers threw balls and tried to hit him. In one game... His first year as a professional player, Jackie received a seven-inch gash, a big cut, on his leg. It was a deliberate injury inflicted on him during a game between the Dodgers and the Philadelphia Phillies. It was an attempt to intimidate him. Still, Jackie refused to quit. He simply said, I'm not concerned with you liking or disliking me. All I ask is that you respect me as a human being. Later in his baseball career, Jackie hit a home run, a triple, a double, and a single in the same game. Jackie could run, hit, steal bases, and play second base like nobody else. His friend and teammate Duke Snyder said he was the greatest competitor I have ever seen. By the end of his first year in the major leagues, Jackie had played in 151 games for the Dodgers. He scored 125 runs and had 175 hits, including 31 doubles, 5 triples, and 12 home runs. He was named Rookie of the Year. And in 1949, he was chosen as the most valuable player in the National League. Jackie had proven that the world of professional sports is far better than any when everyone can participate in it. During Jackie's career, the Dodgers played in six World Series. Jackie played in every one of them. He could hit, and he was fast. He averaged more than 110 runs per season from 1947 to 1953 and had a .311 career batting average. Jackie helped the Dodgers win six National League pennants and one World Series title. These impressive achievements made Jackie Robinson one of the best players to have ever played Major League Baseball. Jackie retired from baseball in 1957. Jackie said, The way I figured it, I was even with baseball, and baseball was even with me. The game had done much for me, and I had done much for it. Jackie Robinson was the first African American inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame. He received many other honors, too. In 1997, Major League 
Baseball honored Jackie by retiring his number from all Major League Baseball teams. This is a very special honor, and it means that no other Major League player on any team can ever wear his number. Every year since 2004, all Major League players wear Jackie's number, 42, every April 15th to remember the important role that Jackie Robinson played in Major League Baseball. Yay, what an amazing guy, right? Okay, so I have some questions for you. Remember, I want you thinking. This is keeping you actively engaged. No need to write it down or anything like that. I just want you thinking. Okay, number one. What was the name of the college in California that offered Jackie an athletic scholarship? Number two, while in the army, what did Jackie do to challenge attitudes about race? Number three, what did Branch Rickey want Jackie to become? Number four, what cause was Jackie Robinson fighting for by signing on to play for the major league team? Number five, what humiliations did Jackie Robinson experience when he joined the major leagues? Number six, what did Pee Wee Reese, Jackie's teammate, do to help support Jackie Robinson? All right, guys, that ends today's lesson. Thanks for hanging out with me. I love you and I miss you. Till next time. Bye.